hey guys welcome back to the channel so in this video i'm going to show you how to weld 18 gauge stainless with just a stick welder and the only thing you need to know is the right technique and uh, with that you are easily able to do things like that so if you find this video helpful then definitely hit the like button and if you want to see more videos like that then surely subscribe to the channel so without further any delay let's start the video so starting off this demonstration with this 18 gauge SS202 grade stainless steel and uh, for the first demonstration I am going to cut down some stainless strips out of this material and, uh, I'm, and then I am going to perform some different kinds of weld pattern over them. So here I have all the test piece ready for the demonstration and again you can see the thickness. For the demonstration I am going to perform two different weld types. One is flat and the second one is a corner type welding. So here I am using three different kinds of a welding electrode but all suitable for welding a stainless steel. Diameter of these electrodes are 1.6. 2.0 and 2.4 millimeter respectively 1.6 and 2 millimeter are slightly shorter than the 2.4 millimeter electrode the problem with 1.6 millimeter electrode is that I cannot perform a stitch welding technique rather than that i have to drag the electrode at a faster rate to perform the welding for first example i am going to use this 2.4 millimeter welding electrode and the current setting i am going to use is a 45 amps i found this to be ideal for welding 18 gauge stainless steel sheets So the key to success here is that you have to give enough time to the previous weld bead to cool down completely and then perform the next stitch. Also you need to cover half of the previous stitch while making the next one. In that case you are always able to succeed it and able to avoid the blow holes formation onto the base metal during the welding you can clearly see that the material starts to warp and this is because the welding when it cools down it try to contract and that's the reason behind that and you can see that how much this strip going to warp and uh, surely you are able to avoid this by clamping your workpiece and at the back side you can clearly see the impression of those weld beads and if you are going to stay for a slightly longer time then it will going to be a hole at the back so now i'm going to use a 2 mm 308 electrode and uh, the current setting i'm going to cap is the same like the previous 45 amps and uh, the recipe is same like a stitch welding to provide a sufficient time for the previous weld to cool down and uh, during the weld I definitely deviates from the straight line but overall after some grinding it's going to be a pretty good looking weld and in the side by side comparison you can see the difference between the 2.4 and 2 millimeter weld beads so the next one is 1.6 millimeter electrode and uh, for the welding I need to drag the electrode at a faster rate and the current setting I am going to cap is around uh, 35 amps. I found this to be optimum and along with that I am keeping a piece of a scrap sheet and th this that is because I first going to create a spark 
over that piece and then going to shift over my main workpiece the problem with this electrode is that if it sticks to the material it starts to glow within few milliseconds you can see that in the first attempt uh, the material starts to separate because of the slow speed but in the second attempt it's completed but uh, surely the material is going to warp because uh, we are creating a lot of heat here you can see a side by side comparison between all the three welds the middle one is quite thinner and uh, the left one is uh, two millimeter slightly lower beads and the right side is a uh, quite thicker and wider beads so now comes to the corner joint and uh, again I'm going to use a 1.6 millimeter electrode with a fast drag method so about this tip I know from the seller is that you can use a piece of a graphite to run smoothly a 1.6 millimeter electrode and uh, this is because graphite doesn't stick with your welding electrode compared to a metal and uh, you can clearly see the result in this weld so the main problem with this electrode is that if it stays red hot then there will be no problem but as soon as the electrode tip completely cool down then you need to ignite the tip with the help of that graphite or any kind of a scrap piece of metal so if you're considering the weld bead it's not looking pretty but there is a good fusion between the two surfaces and uh, if you compare the warping then in the angle the warping is almost negligible compared to a straight weld surely the technique is quite effective but you need a lot of practice to do that so for the 2 millimeter electrode you again need to increase the current up to 45 amps usually 43 to 45 always works for that and again the technique is uh, the stitch welding as you see earlier I found that the working with the 2 millimeter electrode is very easy compared to 1.6 and uh, 2.4 millimeter because it's it is much safer and it does not create a lot of thicker bead onto your workpiece and because of that the chances of blow holes are all also gonna decrease a lot so the third one I am again going with the 45 amps current setting and uh, the same technique which I previously done and uh, in this case the well beads are quite thicker compared to the previous two attempts I have some experience with 2.4 millimeter electrode so it wasn't difficult for me but uh, definitely the chances of blow holes are quite high and now I'm going to show you how flat weld looks with all the three different electrode having different settings I also found that the uh, blow holes are pretty easy to fix with a 1.6 millimeter electrode as compared to 2.4 it is also easy for 2 millimeter but uh, you have to be very careful not to pay too much time over a certain area because that will eventually going to increase the size of that hole I surely not use fast track method a lot but uh, I would say that with a couple of practice you will definitely able to run a straight bead for the second attempt I am going to tack weld all the four corners so that I am able to avoid some amount of warpage but even in this case the warpage occurs and uh, the material gets a slightly curved shape
so if you take a closer look over the weld beads then they come up very nice compared to that fast drag method and uh, I, mostly i use this stitch welding technique for all of my stainless steel projects for the third attempt i clamp down my piece from all the four sides and surely this will help and avoid the warpage And here you can see a side by side comparison between all the three welding electrodes and the result they gave it to you. Now I'm going to clean up all of these weld joints with a pickling agent and uh, that will show you what the actual welds look like without the grinding. So the thinnest bead I got with a 1.6 millimeter electrode as a uh, the diameter says and uh, definitely the, there is no hole inside that workpiece and also the metal get fused quite well even if I do the grinding work there is enough material underneath that which will able to provide a nice smooth transition this one I get with a 2 millimeter electrode and uh, I found it to be one of the best electrode if you are willing to do the welding onto thin sheets like 18 or 20 gauge so this result i get with a 2.4 millimeter electrode and as you can see that the weld bead is quite wide and penetrates a lot in the metal and the weld bead is quite thick compared to 2 millimeter welding electrode So to give you a much better idea now I'm going to make some polyhedrons and that will ensure that which welding electrode seems feasible to you and if you want to make these shapes you can download the PDF file from down in the description section. So with the help of this masonry chisel I mark out the lines where I have to bend that flaps. This thing goes pretty well but uh, eventually I am not able to bend some of the pieces quite precisely as I want it to be so I ended up cut down those pieces and uh, then I did the welding work. So after a couple of hours of work I finally able to build all of these 3D shapes and to build this one I took a lot more time and even that it didn't come as I expected 
there are some dents onto the surface but uh, it's good to go so onto this pyramid i am going to use a 1.6 mm electrode with a fast drag method So after doing some cleaning work here you can see how all of these pieces looks like and if you are going to compare all the three weld then I would say that the 2 millimeter gives the best result and even in this case the cube has a much better edges compared to its uh, rest of the members now I'm going to do the grinding work and show you the final result how they are actually going to be look like so for this video i'm not going to pay much of attention over the cleaning process and uh, i already made a polishing video over that if you are willing to watch that that is a much elaborated video about the polishing process so recommend you if anybody is interested the link is in the description section So here I didn't do any kind of fix over these specimens and what you are going to see is the result I get from the first well. Definitely after some cleaning work there are some visible spots but uh, I didn't do any kind of touch up. So, so to ensure that how effective this method is and uh, it is really possible to do weld over thin sheets with a stick welder.